Okay, today I'd like to talk about satellite backhauls and wild feeds. Um, what, that, uh, what that term means is when there's a live televised event, usually there'll be like a on-location satellite truck um, with cameras uh, covering the event, news events, sporting events, um, that are covered via live satellite. And for a lot of the time, the, these feeds are unencrypted, so they're in the clear, so you can get them with a regular satellite, uh, free satellite TV, free air receiver. So I have my uh, mine aimed at uh, 97 West. I'm just looking at the transponders uh, on the KU band side. But even on Galaxy 19, sometimes there's some backhauls and wild feeds uh, of these events that you can tune in. And the advantage of watching these is the picture quality is sometimes re uh, re a really high bit rate. So what that means is you're getting a really good quality picture. You're getting the actual master feed um, compared to what might be coming through your service provider, which where they might be putting like um, trying to fit hundreds of channels onto onto their spectrum, and they might lower the bit rate and it might not be in the best possible quality. Although I know tons of people that have 52 inch TVs with a standard definition cable box attached to it and they think it's a they think it's a 4K TV and I'm like uh no. <laughs> so um, but yeah the back hauls are just really good quality. So how do you find these back hauls? Well they're not on they're not broad sometimes they are not broadcasting 24-7. They're not like they're not a 24-7 uh, broadcast channel. So I'll use wrestling as an example. I'm a very big wrestling fan. Uh, so with wrestling, um, I watch WWE and Ring of Honor, and they are on satellite. So how, how do I get that on satellite? Well, they're on certain times. For example, WWE, uh, with their Raw and SmackDown shows, are on a Eastern satellite. Was it 54? West um, and uh, they have a frequency of uh, the C-band frequency and then they have the um, the polarity the horizontal or vertical and the symbol rate and that's actually a C-band feed you'll you'll need a C-band satellite dish to watch it now for example Ring of Honor Wrestling uh, that's a KU feed and it's not on all the time. It's only on Mondays and Tuesdays around 11.30ish in the morning. It comes on and it has the, uh, the pre-taped wrestling show from a week prior. And that's on um, at a, about 11.30. And it's on a KU band frequency on, on an 87 West, which I believe is SES2. I go, by, I go by the positions on the arc that they are. And I can watch it there. And I hope Ring of Honor doesn't see this and then decide to take it down. Because I love it on, on satellite. I can get it over the air only in the summertime. So I'd like to be able to get Ring of Honor on satellite. Even though it's the weakest feed. I don't know. I, uh, with my, my, one of my KU band dishes, it's very low uh, SNR. So it's, uh, it's, it pixelates sometimes on a cloudy day. What I would encourage you to do is to get, if you want to get into this hobby... Uh, or if you are into this hobby, but I'm, I'm, this video is more for new people. It is very beneficial to have a, a satellite dish, either KU or C-band, with a motor or multi-LMBs uh, on it. Now, I know there's some people out there, they have what we call dish farms. So they have in their backyard probably a whole whack of satellite dishes. They have some KU-band dishes, they have maybe a couple of C-band dishes, and they look, their house, their backyard looks like they have a TV station. Well, there's just, just some people that are into the hobby and, and they do that. Uh, I'm, I'm up to about maybe one, uh, one C-band dish, although with my, with my, uh, with my four footer, I can get C-band on that, but I'm currently using that for KU-band on 87, uh, 87 West for the news feeds and for uh, wrestling. But uh, uh, it, you can move it on the arc, like where my four footer it has an actuator. So and my C band also has an actuator, so I can move that along the arc. 
Now my dish that I have this hooked up to, the, uh, the 36 centimeter dish, uh, the motor has been flaking out on me so I've kept it parked on Galaxy 19 because that's my main go -to, one of my main go-to satellites. Um, so uh, it, I used to be able to move it uh, and I had it in a tight position between the house and the fence so I couldn't get the full arc but I was able to get about 107 west uh, all the way to about 80, um, what was the, uh, there was, ret there used to be Retro TV on 83 West, I used to get that on it, and what else, uh, what is it, uh, it used to be 70 something, 70 something, that's as far as I got, but that's just because I put it in that spot, and it was actually a great spot because of wind, uh, it was really protected from heavy winds, and it's not pulled into the ground, it's just basically, a tripod with a bunch of concrete blocks holding it down so it doesn't blow over and break. Uh, but uh, that's another thing uh, that is part of backhauls is sometimes you'll see on satellite is they will be some of the DigiNets. Now there is the DigiNet channels like Retro TV, Tough TV, and uh, it used to be a channel called PBJ which is like a kids channel. It showed He-Man and stuff like that on it but it's no longer around. Uh, and that used to be on uh, 83 West, and it was like good to have a channel on there because some, some, there's a whole bunch of satellites now that actually don't have anything on them, so you can't even find where they are on your arc if you're trying to tune your dish. Uh, with uh, a lot of channels leaving, it's uh, it's uh, made that more difficult. So, so uplinkers, you need to lower your rates. I'd like to have a channel on satellite. Have the happy satellite nerd show on satellite, or have a bunch of tech videos on satellite. That's uh, my uh, my dream someday. Although it'd probably be easier just to run a streaming channel on the internet. That would be easier and cheaper um, than actually buying a, a, gal uh, a feed. I'd love to have a feed on Galaxy 19. Wouldn't that be awesome? Let's join together. It's like PBS. Let's create our own TV station of tech nerd videos and we'll put it on Galaxy 19. <laughs> but yeah, so so backhauls and back uh, wild feeds are great if you're uh, if you're looking for um, uh, sports or anything live. It's just a fun thing to be able to have with your satellite. You want to use your satellite and connect get a signal off of a uh, spacecraft that is flying above your house in geostationary orbit and you want to get signals from that extraterrestrial spacecraft to your home onto your television. See that signal? It's getting 67%, 65, 67, 70. It's jumping around there on my TV. Um, but you can get uh, all those channels on uh, uh, that are free on satellite. So I don't know. I've never done a count of all the channels that you can get with C-Band and KU-Band. I'd say they're up in the hundreds of channels uh, that, that I'm able to get that are free and in the clear, unscrambled, um, and free for us all to watch if you have the equipment to, uh, 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 to enjoy it. Um, yeah, so as I said, the, uh, it, the picture quality is going to be a lot better than even streaming. Even though streaming says, you know, you get your 4K stream, they're going to dramatically reduce your bitrate because if you do a speed test on your home internet, it's not going to be um, the most highest bitrate. But they're, um, so that's one thing to take into account. So when you're doing a scan, and, and sometimes what you need to do is you enter in your transponder frequencies. So on my satellite receiver, I can go add, and it'll say frequency, and uh, it'll ask add a transponder. So it starts off right here, it has a KF C band frequency, but I don't want that. So I want to go add a transponder. So I'm going to call it 12950. And I'm going to give it a 3000. Oops. 3000. This is just an example frequency. And I'm going to have it on the polarity of vertical. We'll call it vertical. So I put it, it puts it up there. It's not going to find anything because there's nothing on that frequency. I just ran it off the top of my head. And so if you find somewhere, go back to that ad. So if, say, for example, 
So if you're on a satellite forum like Rick's Wild Feeds and Back Halls or someplace like that, and you see this line of code, line on their on their web on their website that says uh, such and such is on, and it says the satellite, which in this case just we'll use this as an example, G19 at 97 West, as, and say that, that it's KU band, and they'll have like a a five digit frequency. So sometimes they just say the frequency, the polarity, and the symbol rate. They usually go in that order. Um, so that's what you enter in on your satellite receiver, and then you have to just try to fine tune your dish to pick up that feed. Uh, so if you're on a motor, there's a, there's an option in the motor, especially when you're doing feed hunting, uh, antenna setup. So on this receiver, I looked antenna setup, motor setting, position. So I have on my TV here. It has all my satellites on there. I have it set to position 10. This thing says moves for a long time. So you just bring this thing down to here where it says east and west, and you can just tap it once on your on your uh, remote. Don't lose this thing. You lose this thing, get a whole new setup. Don't lose your remote. Uh, <laughs> uh, unless you have uh, one of those satellite receivers that connect, can connect with an app or your computer or something like that. This one doesn't have that. Um, so you go... You can go east, west, and then you'll see the uh, signal quality go up or down as if you have your motor set up. So that's how I do it. Because um, so, sometimes you'll have it and then it might be a little weaker, but if you just bump your dish either east or west just a little bit, your signal will come in a lot better when you're trying to do your feed hunting. Uh, if you have it on a motor, if you have it on a, uh, a whole bunch of dishes, that's a whole different story. You're getting into a dissect switch for all your dishes, um, but this is just, this setup here is very simple. It's the satellite receiver with the coax going outside, going into the motor, uh, which will turn the motor, and then it, the motor has an output and that goes to the LMB, and then uh, that LMB just is the, the basically the antenna that uh, reflects, uses the dish as the reflector, and it sends it back through the, the line to the satellite receiver with a signal. It's generally how that works, and so that's how uh, you can tune one of those back calls in wild feeds. Now, you can also do, so for example, you know there's something on a satellite, we'll say Galaxy 19, when you're searching for a back call or a wild feed, you go, and that's the receiver, you go signal satellite scan, and I have it set to blind scan. So you can also have, there's two, on this receiver it has two different uh, preset scan or a blind scan. Um, the preset scan just means that it's going to, and if it has like say 30 transponders programmed into it, it's just going to go through all those transponders that you have programmed into it. And it is quicker to do it that way. Or you can do a blind scan, and I'll just do a blind scan right now. As I've done in a lot of my blind scan uh, videos uh, where I've talked about different satellites. Also, if you haven't come to my webpage, uh, come to my page, uh, Rubbish Strike Videos. Help me reach 10,000. Uh, likes and followers so I can monetize, be monetized on Facebook as well as YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy to be monetized on Facebook. You need about 10,000. Oh, they're not even doing it in Canada yet, so it's not really. But if they do open up Canada, I'll need about 10,000 likes and subscriptions on my, on my Facebook page. On Robbie Strike Videos. So, anyway, I got this thing to a scan. This thing exit out of moving dish because uh, you just hit exit. And it's going to move around and scan all the channels on Galaxy 19. So sometimes on Galaxy 19, there is some backhauls, wild feeds of either sporting events or news. You name it. Um, TV show um, feeds where they are producing. I've seen um, The Amazing Race on, uh, on, on satellite where it's kind of like it's live, cutting back to tape stuff, going back to live stuff. And that's what you'll see with a lot of news feeds. And it's kind of fun just tuning in and seeing the reporters behind the scenes. I, I think it's fun anyway. Um, you'll see the reporter there on their cell phone texting away and you're like, it's very quiet and all of a sudden they go bang, they're on the air and they do their uh, spin off of the news and then they should go to a video clip. Uh, now the satellites, in my experience, that I've been able to, this thing's not doing anything, there we go. There's some channels being scanned in there. So the satellite that I usually uh, go to for finding feeds. I used to go to, uh, was it Galaxy 1699 West for news feeds. I haven't been searching for feeds as much 
uh, recently, but I found an example on Galaxy 19, that, like around 6 o'clock when news, uh, local news vans are going around, that's the time when a lot of the feeds come up for news feeds, because around 6 o'clock is when they're getting ready to do, do a newscast, and either they'll do the live satellite feed to the studio, and you can watch kind of the behind the scenes stuff going on. Uh, 87 West SES2 is another satellite where there's a lot of news feeds. There's uh, Sinclair Broadcasting has uh, a backhaul on there. They have the wrestling on there. And they also have their news uh, feeds and other Sinclair Broadcasting shows on there. There's CNN News Source where they have a lot of the news source stuff. You'll see sometimes you'll just see like a, a live shot of the White House and that's what's on there for a long time. And then it cuts to... Um, maybe like a Congress or the president speaking, or I'll cut to um, something going on in Washington, because that's, uh, that's a big, uh, that's their new, the new stuff that CNN likes to cover. So when you're trying to find uh, the weekend, when the sporting events are on, obviously that's when you're gonna find the satellite feeds, the sporting events. Um, uh, for example, curling. You'll find curling on different satellites. You'll find the baseball games. You'll find the, uh, uh, hockey games. One thing I want to mention, and I'm not sorry, I'm not uh, as knowledgeable on this stuff as someone. Maybe they can answer that in the comments. Is I know with hockey, football, and such, sometimes it is region blocked, and it is hard to get um, uh, to be able to find what you're looking for. Uh, so I'm not sure. Sometimes some of those fees they will encrypt them, and you won't be able to get them. So watch out on the forums, they'll probably tell you, uh, here, you know, they'll have a headline, uh, the title page, um, an event, and then they'll say in the, if you read it, it'll tell you the events there, but encrypted. So it's like, which kind of gives you the uh, indication that you can't watch that because it's encrypted and you won't be able to uh, see that without a subscription. So anyway, today, with a, just a cloudy day on, uh, I, Scanned in 179 channels. I think I missed a transponder or two. Um, 58 radio channels. Oh, as of today. So if you are going to want to look at some of these back calls and wild feeds, you're going to want to go and uh, either check out Rick's wild feeds and just go to the latest threads. And it also, also on that uh, that forum, I find it's really good for knowing if there's a new channel up there. Sometimes a channel will only be up for a few days, uh, and the reason for that is there's sun outages. So, uh, in one of my videos, I show I did a scan of yeah 103 West C band. I think that was the video. Anyway, I found the Lucan Mux, which is a retro TV and a bunch of the Lucan channels. Uh, it used to be Tough TV, now it's Action and um, Heartland Network and all that. Um, so sometimes a, like a mux like that, a mux being like a whole bunch of channels on a, on one transponder. Sometimes a mux like that will, when there's sun outages, it will be over on another satellite for a few days because there's solar outages that cause uh, some of the signal not to work too well, and then they go back to where they're normally uh, they're normally trans they they're normally transmitting. So sometimes you do get, get these gems. I have seen, um, there has been times when the movie channels have been in, in the clear. Little history lesson about satellite back in the days of analog, back in the early 80s. HBO, which has gone a lot more towards streaming now, home box office, back in the 70s, uh, they were one of the first services to put their service up on satellite. And back in those days, everything was in the clear. They didn't have any scrambling of the analog signals. So you were able to get that stuff for free. That's why a lot of people in the in the 80s had uh, satellite dishes and they because they could get everything for free. And then they were kind of discouraged because they couldn't get the movie channels. So sometimes those movie channels, um, I have seen them. I don't know if they have free weekends or whatever. I don't know if they do that as much anymore, but they used to do that on satellite is they'll be in the clear and you can kind of tune them in um, if you know where they are uh, uh, but uh, yeah a lot of that stuff uh, uh, I haven't even really been <laughs> I don't have I don't have as much time to enjoy that stuff so uh, another one was uh, TBS when Ted Turner put uh, the satellite up there because uh, back when you know you can watch it's been uh, what, 40 years 
more than 40 years? 40, more than 40 years now since Ted Turner put uh, TBS, uh, I don't even know what it was called back then, it became, which became TBS, up on the satellite. And then he had like three wrestling promotions or two wrestling promotions on there, which was the NWA, Georgia Wrestling, and then which became, which ended up becoming WCW. Even WWF was on TBS back block Saturday, um, back in the 80s. Um, so, um, he, he was one of the, he's credited as being one of the pioneers that he put his channel up on satellite and then it was like, uh, everyone else kind of followed him, which is kind of something we'd like, we should see these days where we need another, um, another TBS where there's a channel that's, you know, has content worth watching that is up on satellite. What is that today? Well, it's the DigiNets. Today's equivalent to that is the DigiNets. What did uh, TBS play back in the day? Played rerun shows that people liked, that were popular, and uh, people enjoy watching them. Like <laughs> some of the shows on Antenna TV. Oh, Antenna's not on satellite, but I get on. I get it actually on my antenna. But uh, I'll, I'll go through the channels that play old shows. Um, get TV, Me TV, This TV. That's a movie channel. Movies, which is a movie channel, that's a DigiNet. The Ion Network, there's the Ion Network, Law & Order channel, if you like Law & Order. Um, there is Ion Life, which has, I don't know, in Canada we have this channel called W, the women's channel, and that's kind of what Ion Life is. Uh, there's Cubo, which is like a kid's channel. There is, um, I don't know, go through all the channels that are DigiNets, but there is quite a lot of these DigiNets that are... Essentially what DigiNet is, that is on satellite, is a channel that um, is uh, basically what TBS used to be. Uh, the DigiNets are channels that uh, carry old programming. A lot of them, they have like uh, kind of like the second run programming or really old programming like the Brady Bunch or um, MeTV has Brady Bunch, Saved by the Bell, <laughs> all those shows. Uh, that are on these DigiNets, which are rerun shows. Sometimes I like watching these older shows. I, actually, I do. I like watching these older shows better than watching some of these new shows. So it's kind of neat to have that. And also, one thing where we don't have as much on is movies. I don't get uh, this TV. That was a channel that I really liked. It had movies on that uh, that were kind of my from my era of growing it's up. VHS videos. In the 80s and 90s, <laughs> which were the movies from my era, which I can't find as many of them on Netflix. I'm like scrolling through Netflix, and like, there's nothing in here I want to watch. The Great Outdoors, okay, yeah. <laughs> John Candy! <laughs> so yeah, please uh, check out some of the forums. You'll find them on Google. Uh, I recommend uh, the ones I frequent are is Rick's Wild Feeds and TVROSat.com. It's not as active. Oh yeah, and there's Satellite Guys. Scott's uh, website over at Satellite Guys is a good resource for free to air. They kind of cover a little bit of everything, like if you, ha if you have subscription. And a lot of people do that. They have their subscription services, but they just want to have their free to air services for fun. It, essentially free to air, or free satellite TV is, I don't know if you've ever used shortwave radio, where you can tune in all these radio channels quite easily with a shortwave radio, just with an antenna. I like to talk about antennas. Spread my arms. I don't want to hug an antenna. Uh, I'm an antenna hugger. <laughs> what the frig is that? Um, uh, yeah. So check out those uh, those forms. Rule now before you go on those things, read the rules. And the big rule for those guys is don't talk about piracy. Don't talk about how to get those subscription services for free. That's the big no no. They don't want that. Why don't they want that? Because it's just not what they're talking about there. They're talking about legit free satellite stuff. And uh, so on those forums, don't talk about that. That's Read the, the other rules too, but that's like one of the big ones uh, there is they don't want you talking about that because um, they're, you know, it's, they're not encouraging that. I don't encourage that. I'm an advocate of that. I find there's so much I can watch with the satellite stuff and with YouTube. You don't need to... Uh, go that route. All right, so I've been kind of uh, branching out on all my social media. 
I'm currently on Gab, I'm on Trump Town, I'm on Daily Motion, I'm on all these other places, which is not um, uh, not as big as YouTube and Facebook, but I'm trying to branch out just so that I can um, have videos and uh, I try to reach out to people about this information from wherever I can. And if you want to help me, please share. <laughs> share with your friends that might be interested in this stuff. Uh, it would definitely help me out. If you're not able to help me on Patreon, if you could help me by helping support my channel by just getting the word out about the free satellite, the hashtag free satellite TV and, and what that's all about. Uh, it, it needs to be mainstream. It needs to be something where there's a, uh, there's a hundred of really good DigiNet KU band channels that people who live out in the boonies can get some TV and get some entertainment. <laughs> Uh, were uh, needs to be more well known, like in Europe and the rest of the world. That's not North America. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm on Patreon. If you wanna support me with a few dollars, if you wanna support me with PayPal, donate uh, to, for a few dollars for this for this channel to help it grow um, and help you uh, help it so that. Uh, uh, I can make more videos about this stuff and other technology videos that I'm enjoying doing. So thank you for watching and all of those people that have supported me. Uh, God bless you in the new year. And uh, we will uh, continue to do this work and get the word out. And yeah, Patreon. And uh, yeah, my goal is to have that little, I guess it's a little bit of an unrealistic goal, but I don't know. Someone else has an idea, come to me and let's, uh, let's collaborate. We need to get a tech TV channel on Galaxy 19 and where we can talk about this stuff. Uh, this, that's what the world needs. <laughs> that's my dream, but I don't know if I'll go that route. Imagine that, though. So at the end of the video, please look at the, some of the videos that the mass jobber is looking around at, like an episode of the Brady Bunch. Click on one of those, especially the playlists. Uh, I have a playlist uh, of uh, free satellite TV stuff, which is kind of the course. I've had people ask me, what is, do you have an offer, you should have a course on this. And I was like, my playlist is the course. You just look at there, there's something you feel you know enough about, skip down to the next video on the playlist. Uh, there's lots of good information there. All right, so I'm going to stop rambling here. I enjoy this. Um... I think sometime I'd like to do a live stream, but it seems to be the afternoons are the best time, or sorry, not the afternoons, the mornings are the best time when my kids are at their programs, or, uh, and it's quieter here at my house, I can do this stuff, so the reason why I haven't done a live stream is I, usually my evenings are quite busy, so I don't have time to do a video production <laughs> at that time, so maybe someday... Uh, we'll do a special, but uh, yeah, so please uh, thank you so much for, uh, for all the support of you out there that have uh, helped me with this channel by watching my videos. I, I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. Uh, this, is, this has been such a fun thing for me to do, to share this information with you people out there and to see people uh, hear that they've gotten a satellite dish, they set it up and they're enjoying the hobby. So that's meant a lot to me uh, to, to see that. Uh, and this is going to be a hobby. Don't, despite the rumors of C-band and 5G, you know, going to microwave all of our children with this, the 5G stuff and also making it so that our, our um, C-band stuff won't work. Uh, you'll need a filter on your LMB, all this stuff that's coming. Uh, the one thing I can hope is that KU band will there'll be more stuff DigiNets and stuff like that on KU band someday because uh, KU band is the more accessible I know there's rain fade but if you can get your regular channels on most days KU band is where it's at there's a reliability of C band but KU band is just you know you don't have to have an eight foot satellite dish in your yard to get KU band, you can have a 36 centimeter dish and put it on a motor and get a bunch of channels just with that. But that's kind of the nature of the beast. There's a lot of, lot more channels on C band than there is on KU band in North America for whatever reason. All right.